This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. When life gets challenging, it can be difficult to stay in problem-solving mode. Instead of focusing on the negative, talking with a therapist can help you stay on higher ground. Visit betterhelp.com super and learn to focus on the positive. Hey, brother. What if Tom Riddle from the diary actually successfully returned? Chamber of Secrets is really kind of an underrated threat to the wizarding world, in my personal opinion. As the story is, some really bad Bad things happen. Many students and a cat spend altogether just far too much time petrified in the hospital wing, all of whom had also just avoided death by the narrowest and most convenient of margins. However, what makes this book terrifying isn't the fact that we very nearly lost Hermione Granger, Colin Creevy, Penelope Clearwater, Justin Finch Fleshley, Mrs. Norris, nearly headless Nick. Be honest, he was kind of okay anyway. The real dodge bullet of the story is the fact that Tom Riddle very nearly came back to full power after Harry's just second year of schooling in the wizarding world. Because if not for a small stroke of luck, Phoenix hat and magical sword slash unfounded compulsion to stab a book with the nearest pointy object about, Tom Riddle, AKA Lord Voldemort himself would have returned to power a lot sooner. And if the main story is any indication at all, it would have happened a lot sooner than Harry would have been prepared to take him on in any capacity. I guess that's not totally fair. He does like disintegrate him with his two bare hands just a year earlier, so there's that. Credit where credit is due, of course. But the point I'm trying to make here is that it would have been a much bigger surprise to the wizarding world, and there would have been a lot less in place to slow him down. There are also a couple of caveats in play as well, though. For example, Voldemort wouldn't have his own wand, and the Death Eaters wouldn't be kind of anticipating his return. Not to mention this younger version of Tom Riddle wouldn't have a lot of the information true Voldemort has later on, such as the prophecy. So today we break it all down. What would have happened if Voldemort returned in the form of Tom Riddle? What does this mean for Harry, Ginny, Voldemort Prime, and just the greater wizarding world at large? Today we discuss. Okay, what if Tom Riddle had returned back in Chamber of Secrets? As we started lobbing ideas at our master whiteboard here in the office, we very quickly discovered that there are really two key scenarios that could have allowed this to happen and how they would have turned out. As we know, Harry usually stops this from happening by way of discovering the Chamber of Secrets, going down, rescuing Ginny, and then destroying the diary with the Fang of a Basilisk. So in what scenarios would this not happen? As we said before, there are going to be two of them. First is that Harry just simply dies and never stabs the diary in the first place in the Chamber of Secrets. And the second is that he just never finds the Chamber of Secrets in the first place. Let's first talk about the scenario where Harry just simply dies and never stabs the diary. Basically, everything goes down like it usually would. Harry finds Ginny, Tom summons the Basilisk, Fox delivers the sorting hat, Harry pulls the sword, stabs the Basilisk, and gets bit himself. But the difference is, Harry simply fails to stab the diary, meaning he just dies from the Basilisk Venom, right? Well, actually, probably not. If you will recall, after being stabbed by the Venom, Fox comes over and heals him. And after that is when he picks up the Fang and destroys the diary. So yes, the Venom could kill him, but assuming Fox does what Fox always does and heals him, it doesn't really matter because Riddle is slowly building strength and already holding Harry's own wand and could just quite literally use a Vada Kedavra against him. Either way, Harry is dead and Tom Riddle is back. He's back. And in case you are wondering, this actually does still play by the rules of the prophecy as we know it, which states, either must die at the hand of the other for neither can live while the other survives. In this case, Voldemort would have successfully killed Harry and it doesn't really matter whether or not it's the Basilisk Venom or him just simply using Avada Kedavra. And you might be thinking, well, the Basilisk doesn't exactly count as by his own hand, but I would actually argue, yes, it does. Because if you'll recall, it's by this exact same method that Voldemort actually kills Moaning Myrtle, which is the death that he uses to create the Diary Horcrux in the first place. And at this point, we also know that Harry doesn't have any other means of surviving the situation either, because in this case, Voldemort hasn't taken Harry's own blood into his body, meaning Lily's protection wouldn't continue to live on. In this particular situation, Harry would also not have the protection of the twin cores because Tom Riddle would just quite literally be using 
Harry's own wand. And he would also not have the allegiance of the Elder Wand yet either. So for Tom Riddle, this was a huge missed opportunity. Ironically, it would also mean that the unknown Horcrux that lives inside of Harry would also be destroyed. So there's that. We know this particular bit to be true because Horcruxes rely on the vessels that they reside in in order to continue to exist. So if Harry's body dies, then so does the Horcrux inside of him. Interestingly though, this wouldn't matter for very long based on what we have left residing in the Chamber of Secrets, which would of course be a dead Ginny, a dead Basilisk, a dead Harry, and Fox, who I guess Tom Riddle could probably just deal with on his own, the Sword of Gryffindor and the Sorting Hat, which is a very interesting set of circumstances because do you know who absolutely loves Hogwarts relics? Voldemort. At this point, he would have two more of those relics and would still need to create an additional Horcrux since the diary was just used up. And as we all know, Dumbledore always expected that Voldemort would use the death of Harry to create his final Horcrux. So it's my absolute suspicion that in this particular set of circumstances, he would then use Harry's death to create the Sword of Gryffindor Horcrux. And you might be wondering, could the sword even become a Horcrux? And the answer is, I think so. We actually made an entire video explaining how this could work, but when it comes down to the rules of goblin-made armor, it's that they'll only take that which into them that makes them stronger and doesn't really have anything to do with alignment, good versus evil. And when it comes to Voldemort, if we go back to what Ollivander says, He who must not be named did great things. Terrible, but great. So Harry is dead. The diary has been used to bring his current self back and then immediately replaced with a new Horcrux. What's next in the old five-year plan there, Valdi? Well, almost undoubtedly what he would do is venture off to hunt down the version of himself that actually failed to kill Harry in the first place. Voldemort Prime, if you will. This is always the question when it comes to diary riddle, isn't it? Like, would there be two Voldemorts? So for us, again, that's the immediate hurdle you run into when this question is posed. When he finds that other piece of soul, what does he do with it? Well, the first thing I think he would do is probably question it to learn everything he didn't know about Voldemort's life, basically following the creation of the diary back in 1942. But after gaining that knowledge, what does he do next? Like destroy it, reabsorb it, into himself? Well, I personally doubt that he would destroy it because as we all know, Voldemort thinks himself mighty special. How could Lord Voldemort not have known if he himself, most important and precious, had been attacked, mutilated? Aw, oh, he calls himself precious. It would be cute if it wasn't him. Now, make no mistake, I absolutely think that he would view that portion of himself as a failure. Rightly so, by the way, Harry was like, one man. Meanwhile, 16 year old me just killed 12 year old him. That's at least 12 times as hard. Either way, I still just don't see a scenario where Voldemort would harm a piece of himself at all. But what's also interesting is that I don't think that he would like reabsorb that piece of his soul either. In fact, I'm not even sure he would be capable of doing that if he wanted to. According to Hermione, the only way to rejoin the various pieces of his soul would be to feel remorse, which I think is something that Voldemort just literally is incapable of doing. <laughs> so while he would have two different bits of his soul active at the same time, I actually think this would be more of a hindrance than an advantage for Voldemort. What I do think he would do is actually super interesting. My suspicion is that he would turn that other piece of soul into yet another Horcrux. And I think part of what would inspire him to do this in the first place is the fact that he would now have access to yet another Hogwarts relic, the Sorting Hat. Like, how perfect is that? He would literally have a Horcrux for each of the four founders. The Sorting Hat, which kind of symbolically unites all four of those founders. The ring of his family, and of course, Young Tom Riddle himself, the seventh piece, just as he had planned. Another key player who would be massively impacted by all of this is Lucius, whose plan to plant the diary with Ginny Weasley at the beginning of the school year would have gone way better than he ever could have imagined and would probably sit at the number two spot next to Voldemort for as long as he lived. And from here, Voldemort just basically wins. There's almost nothing that Dumbledore could do to mount a defense that would actually work. Especially when you consider the fact that in this set of circumstances, the prophecy has been fulfilled. The one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord 
Harry is gone. On top of that, he would emerge as a young and handsome looking Tom Riddle, nose still fully intact. Nagini probably never actually becomes a Horcrux, but that doesn't mean that she doesn't just continue to be a very useful ally. I imagine Voldemort would also be able to just get back his original wand as Wormtail would inevitably find out that Voldemort was back, leave Ron and go deliver it to him. And yeah, with that, chaos reigns. Turns out Harry stabbed in the diary. Very important. Who knew? <laughs> Guys, real quick, we need to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Stamps.com. The gift list, the shopping items, the wrapping paper. Ugh, I have to tell you, the holiday season sneaks up on me every single year. And if you are not prepared by the month of December, then things can get hectic. Especially if, like us here at Super Carlin Brothers, you are a small business owner. Because when you get to the fourth quarter of the year, getting shipping out gets really intense. Luckily, Stamps.com is there to make every Everything a lot easier. They are the 24-7 post office that is available everywhere you go. We use stamps.com to print postage for things leaving the office all the time. All you need is a computer and printer and you're ready to go from anywhere. Plus, if you need a package picked up, you can actually schedule that through stamps.com. Shipping rates are also just constantly changing environment, but with stamps.com's switch and save feature, you can easily compare carriers and rates so that you know you're getting the best deal each and every time. Sign up with promo code SUPERCARLIN for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. There are no long-term commitments or contracts required. Just simply head on over to stamps.com, click the little microphone at the top of the page, and enter code SUPERCARLIN. One last time, that's stamps.com, promo code SUPERCARLIN. Link is in the description down below. As we said before, there are two possible scenarios that we think could fit this particular equation. The other one would be, what if Harry doesn't die? What if he just doesn't stab the diary because he just never discovers the Chamber of Secrets in the first place? Well, let's see. In that case, it would mean that Tom's plan via the diary basically plays out just completely uninterrupted. He lures Ginny down to the Chamber of Secrets, slowly siphons off all of her life and just comes back. No one knows. For clarity, I said no one knows not no nose, he would still have his nose. However, without Harry showing up, it would also mean that he wouldn't have access to either the Sword of Gryffindor or the Sorting Hat, but it also means that the Basilisk just never dies, which as you guys know, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, we love when the Basilisk survives. <laughs> It's really just a misunderstood creature at the end of the day. I think it just gets a bad rep because of the whole like death by eyes thing. But give it a loving master who wants to do good and basically, or should I say basiliskly, <laughs> you have a golden retriever on your hands, except it's a gigantic snake. Just huge. But if you give him some sunglasses, he only petrifies everyone he looks at, not actually kills them. To that end, do Harry's glasses just protect him always? Like, would he just be petrified because he's looking through his home frames? These questions need answers. Honestly though, it feels like yes, more people should wear glasses. Either way, what would be the first objective of the newly resurrected Tom Riddle? As ever, I think it's probably find information. He would probably know from Ginny that Voldemort Prime, if you will, was defeated by a young Harry, but he probably wouldn't know how or why he was hunting baby Harry in the first place. Because again, this version of him is just his high school self and therefore doesn't have all of the knowledge that Voldemort Prime would have learned over the next 50 years of living. Technically 38 years, not 50. It's just been 50 years. As such, I think he seeks out himself to find out what happened. Again, I think he probably doesn't absorb or destroy this particular piece of his soul, but again, turns it into an additional Horcrux. And in this particular case, it's most likely Nagini. We know that Voldemort Prime has befriended Nagini in the first place, and he chooses her in a different version of the story as it is. It's also super likely that again, he'd be able to get his wand back from Peter Pettigrew as per always. Again, if we go back to the main story, as soon as he's back to power, he summons all of the Death Eaters and they arrive swiftly. Him pressing the Dark Mark would just immediately let Pettigrew know that he was back. And without a very considerable amount of effort, he's pretty much back in business. From there, armed with the full story as to what's happened, happened and very similar to the main story anyway, I think he would seek out the prophecy. And realistically, it's for the same reason as last time, to find out how to kill Harry more effectively. This go round, he would have a very unique advantage over his normal self, which is that in this case, he would be a very handsome, very talented wizard with very high level connections at the Ministry of Magic, such as, you know, 
Lucius Malfoy, who's probably being honored beyond belief because once again, he successfully brought him back. I marked this particular advantage because presumably Voldemort that came back in the graveyard looked at least somewhat similar to Voldemort prior to his fall. This is based on the fact that when Fudge sees him at the Ministry of Magic, he says, he's back. And Fudge isn't very sharp, so if he can recognize him, you know. On the other hand though, almost nobody even knew that Voldemort's true identity was Tom Riddle, at least according to Dumbledore. Very few people know that Lord Voldemort was once called Tom Riddle. I taught him myself 50 years ago at Hogwarts. He disappeared after leaving the school, traveled far and wide, sank so deeply into the dark arts, consorted with the very worst of our kind, underwent so many dangerous magical transformations that when he resurfaced as Lord Voldemort, he was barely recognizable. Hardly anyone connected Lord Voldemort with a clever, handsome boy who was once the head boy here. Thus, I imagine it would have been super easy for Voldemort to get access to the prophecy. He could probably just have Lucius have Fudge hire him as whatever name he would go by, walk right into the Department of Mysteries and pick it up. And again, just as a reminder, the reason that Voldemort couldn't do this in the main story is because he's too recognizable. That being said, I've always kind of felt like he just could have done it anyway. But interestingly, despite the fact that this would be way easier in this particular scenario, it wouldn't actually be all of that helpful to Voldemort anyway, as the remainder of the prophecy was only useful to Voldemort before he attacked Harry as a baby, because what he learns is that he essentially marked Harry as his equal in attacking him. So as ever with Voldemort, just a big ol' oopsies. If he had known this ahead of time, he may have just never attacked Harry at all, but again, now it's too late. Maybe it at least puts his mind at ease, but I somehow super doubt that. Even if he realizes that the power that the Dark Lord knows not is love, that doesn't really matter either because Voldemort is just quite literally incapable of understanding love. Beyond all that though, there are some other like kind of unique weapons that he would now have in his arsenal that he doesn't typically have. One of these is of course, Barty Crouch Jr., who as far as I am concerned, is his next most competent follower other than maybe Bellatrix. Without the need for him to go undercover for an entire year as Mad-Eye Moody and then be prematurely given the Dementor's kiss, it's possible Voldemort would just have another super capable follower at his disposal. All of this to say though, that I think the entire plot of the story gets accelerated by at bare minimum two years, where most of what happens in Goblet and Order of the Phoenix is just already behind him. Meaning it's very likely that Harry ends up fighting a full-fledged Voldemort in his third year. The surprisingly good news for Harry here is that one, he's already learned Expelliarmus, and two, if they ended up dueling, it would be with the twin cores and Harry would be protected by that. Meaning even if Harry did end up fighting him in his third year, he'd still probably walk away from it. On the note of Harry though, he also has some other advantages on his side as well. For example, because he wouldn't be lured to the ministry on the basis of Sirius being held captive there, it also means that Sirius probably doesn't end up showing up and falling through the veil. Meaning hopefully Harry has Sirius as a mentor for a bit longer. On the bad news front for Harry in this particular situation though, Voldemort didn't use Harry's own blood to return like he normally does in the graveyard. So if when Harry ultimately faces him down for realsies, he's not tethered to life in the same way that he typically is. Meaning when Harry does ultimately face him in the Forbidden Forest, he probably just does die. This would of course be terrible and sad, but it's also always an essential piece of the puzzle considering the fact that Harry himself is a Horcrux. The boy must die. Yes, yes. He must die. Speaking of which, the other big question here is whether or not Harry and Dumbledore ever even figure out the Horcruxes in the first place. Typically, Dumbledore figures this out with the aid of the destruction of the diary and what Tom says to Harry in the Chamber of Secrets. However, I think the answer here is that yes, they still figure it out. In this scenario, Harry still would have owned the diary himself for a brief period of time, and Tom Riddle would have still taken him inside of the diary and showed him around. So Harry could still tell Dumbledore about that, which is very useful information, especially when you consider the fact that Dumbledore was one of the few people who actually knew that Voldemort's true identity was Tom Riddle. Plus, Dumbledore would also just know that Voldemort was back because the moment that Voldemort summoned his Death Eaters, it would also include Snape, who would then promptly tell Dumbledore. This would all be information 
information that timeline wise would line up very specifically with Ginny's death. And I think from there, you can just imagine that Dumbledore would start making his unusually accurate guesses. As ever, I think this would also lead to the inevitable discovery and associated fate attached to the resurrection stone slash Peveril Rain. Dumbledore's fascination with the stone would just, of course, predate Voldemort and Harry altogether. This would, of course, put the same death clock on Dumbledore as per always. But under these circumstances, Draco would not have the assignment to kill Dumbledore, as that was basically just a punishment for Lucius's failures anyway. And if anything, in this particular instance, Lucius is pretty much crushing it. One hurdle Dumbledore would have to figure out is how he is going to destroy the Horcruxes at all, because typically he has the Sword of Gryffindor, which has been imbibed with Basilisk Venom. This one doesn't feel like the biggest hurdle though, as I can just sort of imagine that like a Dumbledore would have some knowledge of some other way to destroy a Horcrux. Not to mention he also has the Elder Wand at his disposal. To be fair, he doesn't actually use the Elder Wand on the ring the first go around anyway, but like any opportunity to use a sword, Am I right? Hashtag swords are cool. Plus, I also just don't hate a world where instead of leaving Harry the sword of Gryffindor in his will, he just literally leaves him his own wand. This one could be really interesting because even when he gave him the sword of Gryffindor, it wasn't Dumbledore's to pass down, so he wasn't able to actually give it to Harry in the first place. The Elder Wand, on the other hand, seemingly could be the key, but it would also still require Harry gaining mastery over the wand somehow, which might not be as impossible as you might think, because Harry is already the true owner of the Invisibility Cloak, one of the Deathly Hallows. Dumbledore already also leaves him the Resurrection Stone, the second Deathly Hallow inside of the Golden Snitch. And so if he also left him the Elder Wand, then Harry would just quite literally be in possession of all three Deathly Hallows. He would have united them. And if he goes about dying for everyone he loves anyway, and is just also the master of death, this might once again give Harry a way to survive death. Of course, if Harry never actually breaks his own wand, then it might just be his best defense against Voldemort anyway, because it's been supercharged by the duel that they had with the twin cores and normally shoots golden flames when Voldemort attacks, which on its own is just a theory that I would love to delve into more. Like, could Harry's own wand just actually have destroyed all of the Horcruxes anyway. Because again, if you go back to the Battle of the Seven Potters, Harry's wand of its own accord shoots a massive spell back at Voldemort. And all of the Horcruxes are just a piece of Voldemort. So it kind of stands to reason that it should have a similar kind of power against all of those as well. To be fair, he does have his wand while they have the locket and he even tries to cast a spell at it and it does nothing. But the locket hasn't been opened yet and therefore isn't vulnerable yet. And of course, by the time it finally is, his wand has already been broken. To be honest with you, we might be reaching a point in the situation where the ripple effect of how many circumstances would be different by the number of changes that are involved are so significant that it's hard to figure out what would happen. It's possible that by having accelerated the plot this much, it just lessens the amount of time Harry has to learn additional magic and Voldemort just simply wins. But in the main story as it is, Harry's magic pales in comparison to what Voldemort is capable of. It's their unique circumstances that shifts the tide. Not to mention that Harry just in general has good instincts and is able to fully understand love, which is the most powerful form of magic. So from here, I would actually love feedback from you guys. Let me know what you think. If Harry never finds the Chamber of Secrets, does Voldemort ultimately win or can Harry find a different method to get there? Let us know in the towel section down below. But otherwise, guys, as ever, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see more What If action from us, we have an entire series going through each book in the Harry Potter series, talking about what it would have been like if Harry had been sorted into Slytherin House. You can check out that whole playlist right over here. Otherwise, until next time, bye.